Hi, I'm Chris, the developer of OctoApp. Welcome to my Tailscale setup tutorial. Mm, Tailscale is a point-to-point -point VPN service which will allow you to remotely access your OctoPrint, uh, either directly through the browser or from within OctoApp. If you checked out my other setup tutorials for Octo Everywhere at Ngrok, uh, this one is a little bit different because there's no plugin for Tailscale, there's a little bit more legwork involved and it's a little bit more complicated setup in general. But it's free and it's a super secure and great solution. So, um, what to say else? Oh yeah, this will be a little bit more unscripted video as you just noticed and I will just install it. You can follow along at home and generally there should not much that go wrong. It's a Pretty simple setup, not as simple as the other, but it's fine. And without further ado, let's jump in. The first thing you need to do is to open a SSH connection to your Octopi, or if you have some graphical interface, you can also log in on your display and keyboard and just do it locally. But usually you would do ssh.pi.octopi.local. Uh, if you're using Windows, you can use uh, a small tool called Putty. Um, but you will find plenty tutorials. Uh, uh, Putty, like this. Um, you will find plenty of tutorials on how to access the Raspberry Pi via SSH. So I won't talk too much about that. Um, once you're connected, it's actually quite simple because first <laughs> we actually go to uh, tailscale.com and we will create a new account. So let's get started. Um, they don't offer login via email, only with one of those like uh, SSO providers. Let me quickly sign in with my... Okay, here we are. Mm, basically, this is extremely simple. So um, to use Tailscale, you have to install Tailscale on every device that you want to use it on. You don't only have to install it on your Octopi, but also on your phone. Let's actually start with the phone. Um, basically, all you need to do is download the Tailscale app. Let's install it. And let's open it. We also need to sign in with the same Google account as before. And that's the first device set up. Uh, so you will see in the web interface that we already have the Pixel 4a here, which is this device on the side. Um, but on the Pixel there is like a request for a VPN. And that's basically just how Tailscale works. Tailscale is a point-to-point -point VPN. So the Tailscale app acts as a VPN service. Um, so you can just say, okay. And now you will notice we have this little key up here, which means a VPN is active. But, and it's a little bit annoying, um, there is, yeah. So you see this silent notification down here, which says connected. And it's basically just like the status of the Tailscale app. On the Pixel devices and on some other Android devices, it's super small and that doesn't really matter. Like it's down here, like, yeah, whatever. Uh, but on some Android devices, it's like a big proper notification and that's hyper annoying because basically it doesn't go away. It's just like constantly saying connect in your notification shade. So what you can do is you can long press the notification um, and then you can just select. It's a little bit different depending on your device, but for me, it's this gear up here and it will just bring me to notification settings. And you will have like different notification categories, uh, file transfers, whatever. And then it says VPN status. And you can just disable the VPN status notification. Um, and you already saw it goes away. So now it's no longer here. You still have this little key up there, which is great because it tells you that the VPN is active. Um, but the main notification is gone. And depending on which Android device you have, that's that's a big deal. Super annoying. Um, so we have now the Tailscale app installed on our Android phone. Yay. Let's continue to our Octopi. Mm. So basically here in our uh, onboarding thing, we just go to Linux and we copy the little command here. The SSH connection is still open. So we just paste that and hit enter. Uh, the standard password for Octopi and other raspberries is raspberry. So all lowercase raspberry. 
and it will quickly install. Let's wait and I will get back to you once everything is completed. Okay, installation is complete. Um, you see at the bottom there's this message basically setting up, uh, saying us like to start tail scale, we should run sudo tail scale up. Uh, let's do that. Um, I have a little bit of a problem because I already had installed, so I want to force re uh, I read online. So let's see if that works. Yes, so basically for you just ignore the for three hours, just say sudo tail scale up and it will give you a URL which you can basically open in your browser and it will prompt you with a sign in. So you sign in with the same Google account again. And it will say authorization successful if everything went wrong, um, everything went right. <laughs> And you should see also success in here. So now your tail scale is up and running. If you go back to the page you had before, you now see we have a pixel 4a and we have the octopi. And they seem to be connected, which is great. So there's not much else we need to do. Mm, we should be able now to open the octoprint web interface on our phone via tail scale. How this works is you see, mm, I think the best is just to open the tail scale app. Uh, you see Octopi is now listed in your tail scale app and there's this little IP below it. You can just click it and it will copy the IP address and then we can head, uh, hit, you, we can go in our, into our browser, sorry, and just click paste. Um, if you're running Octopi on port, uh, Octoprint on port 80, which most of you will be, um, then that's all you need to do. You can just hit enter and that's it. If you run on port 5000 or something, then you need to add the port to it, obviously. Um, yeah, but that's it. You can open it. And now you see the login interface of your Octoprint. So here again, we can say test test that's my login credentials it's uh, super secure and you will be in your octoprint web interface so um, one more important thing to note is that the tail scale app needs to be running in the background otherwise it doesn't work so um, this ip address 100 dot something that yours will be different um, it's kind of virtual it doesn't really exist and it's basically just routed through the vpn so if I go back to tail scale and I disable the VPN, you see like the, the little key in the top went away as well. And I go back to, um, yeah, it always tells me the server is offline, but it, it won't load. Like that IP address does not exist unless the tail scale app is running and you're logged in with the proper account. Um, and that makes it quite secure because basically the entire, uh, like, like the entire Octoprint is protected by the tail scale login and by a Google account. Uh, let's enable it again and now this will pretty much load instantly yeah cool um, let's set that up for octo app as well um, and that's pretty simple all you need to do is you go to octo app and you open the main menu you go to octo print and then configure remote access uh, here we want to go to the manual tab and the octoprint URL is basically HTTPS, uh, sorry, not S, just HTTP. Um, it's still encrypted because basically the HTTP uh, request is um, sent through the encrypted VPN tunnel. So HTTP is fine. Don't do HTTPS, it won't work. Uh, the rest we can just leave blank and then we can say uh, save remote URL. It will say remote access configured and we are ready to go. So if we close that screen and I disable my Wi-Fi, so we are using my super slow 3G <laughs> uh, remote connection, which I have on my development device, then it will take a second and it will tell us that it's now connected using tail scale. Here we go. And basically everything still works as before. Uh, it's just now that the traffic is routed through tail scale instead of going directly to your Octopi. Um, so I don't know, for example, we can 
still see our files, uh, we can still open files, we can still preview G-code, which is 3G slow. Here we go. Uh, so that all works. We could start a print, you can cancel a print. It's, it's the same. And that's basically all there is to say. Um, so one thing I forgot, mm, the webcam. The webcam is a little bit problematic if you use um, a different device for the webcam. So for example, my webcam, uh, you see it here, it's uh, 192 something. It's an old smartphone I use with the app to function as a webcam. Um, in that case, this device is now not part of the Tailscale network. Mm, and Octo, um, Octo app still uses the local address I set up in the Octopi settings. So basically it just uses whatever is here, um, but it doesn't change it. So if you use a secondary device for your webcam, this is a little bit more challenging, but technically what you need to do is you need to install Tailscale on that device as well. And then I would just put the Tailscale um, domain here, but then basically you always have to have Tailscale enabled. So that's a little bit, it's, it's not nice. Um, if your webcam is on the Octopi itself, so for example, you have a recipe cam uh, just connected to it, I think that's a super common case, um, then the uh, webcam will have the same uh, uh, tail scale IP. And usually you would have something here like, I don't know, like video uh, or something like that, like not HTTP something, but like some other thing mm, will work perfectly fine. Mm, but if your webcam is an external device, it's more challenging to set up. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. There's not much else to say. Um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> so uh, enjoy Octap, uh, enjoy Tailscale, and have a lot of fun printing. See you next time.